Okay, students, so here we are. We're at the Energy Skate Park, and the basic first screen that you see is this intro. You can also go to this setting here where it lets you change the friction, or you can go to Playground where you can actually change the, um, the shape of the ramp. So um, I'm going to do one example with you. So one hypothesis of what might affect the um, speed at the bottom could be the angle of the ramp. So we're going to take the skater here, and I've already set this up ahead of time. So we're going to release the skater from the middle of this top dot, and we'll measure his speed at the bottom. So I'm going to click on bar graph here so that we can um, see how that affects or see how that changes as he goes down. It's kind of in the way. I'm going to take it away for right now. OK, here we go. And I'm going to hit slow motion on the way down so I can pause it right at the bottom. So his speed up here was, let's see, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So I'm going to call that 61, uh, whatever units this is. Let's just call it, um, well, we don't know what the units are, so it's just going to be 61. All right, so what I would like you to do then in your notebook on the pages that I indicated in NEO is write down as a hypothesis. So let's say if the slope is um, increased. Well, I'm going to say decrease on mine because I've already started with it pretty steep. Then the speed at the bottom will decrease. All right, so this is a hypothesis. It may or may not be true, but we're going to run some tests to see. So I'm going to do slopes, three different ones, large, medium, and small. We're not getting um, quantitative here. We're just comparing relative. And the speed at the bottom for a large slope was 61. All right, let's go back to the skate park. And this time, I'm going to um, take this. I'm going to drag it to make this slope less. Still starting from the same height, so from the middle of that top uh, red dot. And here we go. I'm going to pause it right at the bottom. I'm going to go to slow-mo so I can more easily pause it. And in fact, I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to go step by step. So right there. Let me one more. Okay. So speed this time 60, very similar to last time. I would say that's all within the error of what this thing might be measuring. All right. And let's go back to skate park. So I'm going to make the slope even less. Oops, something just moved up there. So that might affect our result a little bit. I don't know if I can change that. And here we go. And stopping him. OK. And so there we have at the bottom, same speed, 61. All right, so what kind of a claim can we make based on the data we just collected? This would be as a conclusion here. So we can say that the um, speed at the bottom was not affected by the slope. Evidence of this is that the speed was um, around 60 for each trial. So reasoning. Um, this makes sense because Because the, um, um, the smaller the slope, the slower the acceleration. Well, we, we, we can talk about this two ways. Um, I'm going to not bring in an acceleration right now. Let's say this. This makes sense because the skater started with the same kinetic energy, sorry, the same potential energy each time. And if we go back to our skate park, if we bring in our skater again, um, so we can see the amount of potential energy he started with. It's in blue. And as he rolls down, 
we can see that potential energy converting into kinetic energy, green. And so we can see that by the time it gets to the bottom, the potential energy all got converted to kinetic energy. Therefore, he has the same speed. So we come back here. We can say um, as he rolled down the ramp, his potential energy converted into kinetic energy. So he had the same amount of kinetic energy at the bottom of each ramp. Okay, and so this is what I would like you to do for, um, for three other hypotheses. And um, as far as what you can change, if we go back and look at the energy skater here, we can change his or his mass. We can also change how much friction there is. I wouldn't change both of these at the same time. I would keep friction off unless you're doing an experiment where you're just varying the friction, keeping all other factors constant. And um, what else can we change about this here? We can change how high he starts from. And as far as getting a measurement of that, we can use a grid. So of course, you can just say low, medium, high, or you can use it in numbers like um, starting from 4 or starting up here from a height of 6. Okay? All right. Well, thank you for tuning in.